Good morning, everyone. Thanks for watching. Today is day 21 of the 30 day profit challenge. It's Sunday morning and I appreciate you being here today. I know it's early for some of you, but I really thank you for being here. It's been uh, 21 days of getting up at 730 and getting on the camera here for you and putting together hopefully a lot of good information. I really hope you've enjoyed the watching the shows. By all means, if you have any questions or any feedback, I really appreciate it. I'm trying to make this content as helpful and insightful for you as possible. So thanks for watching. You know, today we're gonna to get into what we call the total conversion margin formula. And the total conversion margin formula is basically a summation of all of the steps that we've been doing in this conversion funnel that we've talked about over the last couple of days. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tie it all together, review all the steps in the conversion funnel, as well as look at how you can calculate that for your own e-commerce business. So with that, let's dive into it. I'll just switch over to my screen and we'll go from there. Okay, so the customer margin tree. This is something, whoops, we're at the last slide. My apologies. Here we go. So we're at day 21 of the total conversion margin formula. So the total conversion margin formula is really the summation of what we've been talking about in this sort of third pillar of the profit litmus test. And what we're talking about here is tying together that whole conversion formula that we've looked at over the last couple of days. You know, we started off where we had visitors at the top end of your funnel, and those visitors convert and go through looking at any sort of specific page on your website. And when they show an interest in products, whether they visit a category page or search results page, they become a browser. Those browsers then, as they're showing interest in some products or product detail pages, become shoppers. Those shoppers, when they're ready to add something to their cart, become a buyer. And when those buyers are ready to put down their credit card, they go through the checkout step in hopes that they reach all the way to the order confirmation step and become a customer. So I'm gonna take you through the experience that I had as all of these steps when I recently bought a armband for running as I was looking to get into running again this summer in the spring. So, you know, I'd done some research and I'd heard about this product called a quad lock. And so a friend of mine had showed me one. And so I went to their website and checked it out and here it is. And you can see that the quad lock really what it is, is it's an armband with a bunch of different mounts that you can add to your iPhone. And so what I decided to do is do, I'd done my research already, but I was looking for the armband that was going to be for running. And so as I dug a little bit deeper, I went and took a look at the armband for running. Now, when I got to this screen, this was a category page that showed all the different possible running armbands. And what I had to do is to pick up the one that matched my phone. So I've got the new iPhone 11 Pro here. And so as I took a look a bit deeper, I was able to go in and look at my specs, watch a video around the actual quad lock and see how it works, get a few little pictures to see how easy it can turn on or click off from my arm. What they also showed me is a few optional experts. There's, there was this little poncho that, uh, you know, it's a little rain cover to add to it. So I thought, hey, that might be coming handy if I ever am out in the rain, I don't wanna get my phone wet. So I added both the phone and this poncho to my cart. And now I became a buyer. I was a serious shopper that was now ready to go buy this product. And so, you know, before I wanted to check out, I wanted to make sure that I knew what they were going to offer in terms of payment options. And so you can see they often take Visa or MasterCard, which is good. They also use Apple Pay and PayPal, which are even better. Then what we've got is I did it get free shipping on this order, which is great as I qualified for it. There is a 30 day money back guarantee. So if I said I don't want the product or like it, I can return it. And it's 100% secure. So these were all some good trust signals that said, okay, well, I'm a buyer. I'm ready to go spend money. So I went to check, click checkout. And from here, I was presented with all the steps that I would need to fill out my details. So whether it was my email address and my uh, shipping details below, filled those details out. Then from there, I was presented with what my shipping options would be. It gave me free shipping, which was nice. And then from there, all I had to do was put in my credit card details and check out. And from there, I became a customer now of Quadlock officially. And so you can see I bought this product a couple of weeks ago, just before we had started this challenge. And it arrived here just after the challenge had started. So that's a good sign. Um, you know, it took a couple of weeks, but I was very happy with the product. And now I've been using it for running for the last few weeks. And it's turned out really great. So, you know, I went through each of those individual steps, but you know, you can calculate this conversion rate for your own site as well. 
And so what, how you would look at it is, is if you started off taking a look at all of the people that visit your website, let's say it was a million visitors for that last 12 months or the last year. Then you would take a look at is all the people that were browsers. So those browsers would be people that visit a category page. And if we take the total browsers over the total visitors, you're going to get what we call your traffic to product impression conversion rate. Now it may be 50% for you. It may be 50% for something else, but we just put 50% in here as a sort of an example as to showcase how we're going to get all the way down to the 3% that everyone strives to get in e-commerce. Now, the next step is you want those browsers to become shoppers, right? And so you want to take a look at everyone that's visited your product detail pages and then take the shoppers over the browsers to reach your product impression to product view conversion rate. From there, shoppers continue on further by adding things to cart, and now they've become buyers. They're serious about buying something from you. And so that conversion rate is your product view to add to cart percentage rate. Those buyers, once they've added it to cart, are really at the last step of the flow, which is really getting through checkout. And those checkout people we call spenders. They're the ones that are actually ready to spend money on your particular product. And so those spenders, they check out and reach all the way to the, the process. Or, you know, to calculate that, you look at your add to cart to check out percentage. And then finally, those customers that reach all the way to order confirmation, those people would be from spenders to customers. And so we check that out as your checkout to order confirmation step. Now, looking at this on the individual micro basis, it looks like 50% and 50% and 50%, not too bad, right? But then when we do the math and we add it up all the way from the top to the bottom, from visitors all the way through to customers, we get a 3% traffic to order confirmation step. So that means that there's 97% of people that fall off in all of those other steps, leaving you with 3% that have actually gone from all the way at the top, all the way through to the bottom and become a customer. So that's how you do the math. This is a little bit further example of looking at how do you look at the overall conversion rate of customers to visits. And so, you know, if you took your 3.25 over the 1 million, you're going to get an actual conversion rate of 3.13%. And this is sort of that 3% that most people strive for. Um, you know, when we looked at it in less than a couple days ago, there was some comparisons that we benchmarked against, you know, different industries of conversion. And some are as high as 4 or 5%, some are as low as 1% to 2%. So you're hopefully somewhere in the middle around the 3% mark. But if 3% is, is not where you're at right now, do know that that's sort of where Amazon kind of is a benchmark that most people kind of quote, as well as where most retailers kind of strive for in their e-commerce conversion rates. So if you're not at 3%, go back and look at your funnel and maybe using a tool like Google Analytics, you're able to go visualize this a little bit further and you'll see what I mean. This again is a mock store that's available from Google that allows you to go in and look at how to use Google Analytics to track the checkout fee flow of your particular store. And so we started off, if we looked at the start of the, the flow at all sessions that reach, and then people that reach product views, what you'll find is, is that 19.27% of people in this case, or 10,000 over 53,000 is what actually gets to be the product view conversion rate. Next step into it, we take the number of sessions that are add to cart over the sessions with product views and that gives us a conversion rate in that step of 17.94%. What you'll notice too, is there's a running summary here of the 19.27 from this previous step. And then we combine the two of 19.27 plus 17.94 to get to 4.06 in terms of the conversion rate. Next step into it, a little bit deeper, we're now looking at shoppers that have become you know, buyers and buyers that are now becoming spenders. So we take our 861 over our 2191 and that's about 19.53% of a conversion rate. Again, these three combined, we're sitting at now 1.6% on the cumulative running so total of our conversion rate. And then finally, we've got 55 people that reach a transaction out of the 861 buyers that, uh, or spenders, sorry, that attempted to start the checkout process. And so with that, that drop-off point is about 6.39% or 94% of people that reach the checkout the abandonment or sorry, abandoned checkout. And so what that leaves us with is, is an overall conversion rate of 0.1% in this particular funnel. And that's calculated as taking our 55 over our 53,924. So that in a nutshell is how you calculate your conversion rate. 
I hope that was helpful. I really appreciate that, uh, you know, this has been a lot of math to go through, but hopefully the math lesson in all these little micro conversions has helped you understand a little bit further about your e-commerce conversion rate. So thanks for watching today. You know, in the next sort of last section of this profit challenge, we're going to dive into the customer margin tree and we're going to explore a little bit deeper about how you can take your customers and use those people to extract the most margin out of it as well. So with that, I leave you today with a quote or an ask to be present today, connect with others, and go make an impact in someone's life today. Thanks for watching, and I'll pause the recording and take any questions.